In this edition, we will take you on a tour of higher education institutions in Malawi to appreciate the progress made in implementing different projects that the Malawi government is undertaking in collaboration with donor partners to achieve human capital development as the Malawi 2063 plan aspired. This is the Longwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Luana. The university has also benefited through the construction of a teaching complex by the Malawi government through the Public Sector Investment Program. Another teaching complex has been constructed by the Norwegian government and both interventions are timely as Luana has grappled with limited class space since its inception. Dr. Agnes Mwangwera is the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the Dilongwa University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Luana. She says these complexes came with purpose-built laboratories, 400-seater lecture theatres and staff offices. The project also enabled the university to digitize books and modules in line with Odell Delivery Mode, a development which has enabled normal program students to access the digital learning resource, thereby promoting the quality of education at the Luana. Overall, it has improved the, in terms of the skills of our lecturers, as well as the, the technologies that are used for uh, instruction in the university. If I give an example, before that lab, we, we had a laboratory that was taking 40 students. And the, our um, intake for first year is uh, about 1,000. So what it meant was that that 40, 40 capacity lab had to take 1,000 students. Each student should have an opportunity to have a practical session. And what that meant is that you have a technician who would have to deliver the same course more than 10 times because the students would come in maybe groups of 50, 50, 50, 50. So it would take the whole two weeks just to deliver one session. But with the 120 seat capacity, now one week because you have 10 sessions, morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon, and they rotate. So in one, in one week, you are able to deliver a practical session. This aquafish center of excellence is also under construction at Luana with funding from the World Bank. This multi-purpose hall has also been finished and reinforces the splendor that the administration block named Gateway imposes on the campus. Professor Kaunda is the vice chancellor of the Lilongwa University of Agriculture and Natural Resources. The coming in of this elegant administration block has helped us to improve on efficient processes of the university. In other words, we are better placed now to serve the 12,000 students than we were 10 years ago. So we're so grateful to the government because this building is one of the icon buildings which government said we're going to put money there to ensure that a university is housed within a proper housing. So we're very thankful. The agriculture these days has to move into fourth industrial revolution. The agriculture these days have to be ICT based. The agriculture these days has to be science based. So some of the programs which save is we are championing in save, like a program on computer science, natural sciences. These are the programs that are going to transform the agriculture sector into a modern agriculture, which square goes into the Malawi 2063. Commercialization drive can only be achieved if you have got these programs. So that is going to be a big thing. The Muzuzu University is also on the expansion drive in terms of faculties, students, and staff having taken over from a teacher training college infrastructure then. From one faculty at the inception to now six faculties and five centers of excellence with a student population of 9,000, the pressure on teaching, learning, and research was inevitable. This is why in 2017, government started expanding Mzuni's infrastructure 
by constructing an open distance and e-learning hub. And according to Mzuzu University Vice Chancellor Professor Wells Ngini, this magnificent center houses more than 1,000 students at the Luwinga campus. You would notice that um, with this construction, it helped us to get more students through ODL. And uh, uh, not just ODL, when the ODL students are not on campus, that facility is also supporting even face-to-face -face delivery because of the space that it has created. Fortunately, again, government uh, has come in again with the funding from World Bank. They are supporting us uh, in a project which is called Skills for a Vibrant Economy, SAVE. Through SAVE, we are also going to construct what we are calling entrepreneurs a training and incubation center. This facility is going to support students and uh, society in renewable energy and ICT innovation and technology development. So this is also going to add to our teaching and learning space uh, because it's going to accommodate about 1,500 uh, students, but also all staff in ICT and the renewable energy departments are going to be uh, housed in this facility. The Skills Development Program, SDP, implemented by Malawi government with funding from the World Bank, also benefited Mzuni by constructing a skills application center at the Dunduzu campus in Mzuzu. This facility too has enabled Mzuni to expand and enroll more students studying tourism, hospitality and management. The SDP program has also enabled Mzuni to construct four satellite centers in Karonga, Lilongwe, Balaka and Mulanje to ensure that students coming from far should be given space to access education without converging at the Luinga campus. Instead, lectures are delivered to more than 800 students through the Odell modality. One thorn in the flesh of Mzuni's expansion was the fire that gutted the university's library in 2015, and since then Mzuni has been using a makeshift library with a sitting capacity of 500 students for a university with a population of 9,000 students. To bail out the university, Professor Singini says government is currently constructing this three-story modern library which will greatly lift the face of the university. That library has a capacity of supporting uh, 5,000 students sitting at once and it also had um, an auditorium which has a capacity of 500. But besides that, there are also offices for staff uh, and also we have some seminar rooms for postgraduate, but also we are establishing a data center uh, in that library. So it already uh, gives us an opportunity to accommodate more students and staff in a decent um, environment uh, as part of uh, uh, contributing to human capital development, uh, which is enabler number five in our Malawi 2063. Domasi College of Education is also a beneficiary of the infrastructure developments that the Malawi government is implementing in collaboration with different donor partners. The government, through support from the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, is expanding the college through construction of this magnificent library, this administration complex, and these laboratories for physics and chemistry. These labs have come with purpose-built state-of-the-art equipment to aid in grooming teachers in cutting-edge science and technology for the country to realize critical pillars in Malawi 2063, human capital development and mindset change. The expansion, which is valued at 13 billion kwacha, has greatly improved the face of the college. Dr. Akanjel Mtipe Yambeni is the principal of Domasi College of Education. Previously, before this facility, the, these officers were scattered. They are all over. But now, you can find them in one place. So, going back uh, to, uh, to, one, to the other pillar of the NESP 2020-2030, which is our policy document in education, this will increase governance and management because it is easy to bring these people together and to talk about issues together. Even if in an emergency, you will know that we will find these people are in one place. For us, this library 
is a, is a massive uh, contribution to this college because we are operating in a very small, uh, very small library. So when it comes to a higher education institution like this one, we needed a spacious library. So having this library to us, it's, it's, it's a plus because it, it is affecting on the teaching and learning materials, thereby affecting the quality of the delivery of our program. Another interesting infrastructure that Domas has benefited is the construction of the six female hostels with 144 bed space each, a development which has enabled the college to ensure that 51% of girls reside on campus. The World Bank funded Skills for a Vibrant Economy SEV project is also constructing a teaching complex whose structure starts next month. This one will have an online learner management system and teleconference facilities to boost the open distance and e-learning mode of teaching. Rita Masse is a fourth year student studying history and social studies majoring in history. During her study at the college, she has been a non-residential student before she moved on campus to the old hostels and now she is in the new hostels. And it was tough, like we had to pay rent, it's expensive to buy food and sometimes you had to be like moving from campus to outside to prepare food like for just one hour and it was very hectic for a student. So you have to work hard at the same time, you have to look at your house. And um, I was taken as a residential student in my third year. I was at Malawi Hostels, you call them Malawi Hostels. They're the oldest. Their problem there is that they have spaces up the roof and when someone is making noise in the next room, you are disturbed, you can't study once everyone else is making noise. And compared to these new hostels, everyone has their own privacy. You can be in your room and study, it's quiet, so you can study and it's okay. And having a, that, now they have increased the intake, there are many students on campus. The upgrading of Domasi College of Education has also brought cutting-edge equipment to enable students with special needs. Fred Sande is a third-year mature student with visual impairment and teaches in Sanje. First and foremost, I would like to thank the government because uh, previously I did my diploma here, but these facilities were not here. But as I've come this time, the facilities are, are very helpful. For example, I'm having this recorder. Previously, we did not have this one. This recorder aids us in recording the lecture, and the, when we are free, we, 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 hear, we listen to the lecture, and we are, we are also having the, the tab, which we also use in the, uh, maybe finding some information on the internet. But pre previously, these things were not there. At Narikule College of Education, the World Bank funded skills for a vibrant economy, SEF, is constructing a skills center here, which will house open distance and e-learning center, order, home economics laboratories, and food and nutrition laboratories. The venture is good news for the growth and expansion of this institution, which is only six years old. When we're constructing this college, we are uh we did not include the human ecology laboratory as well as the agriculture laboratory. So there were, there were no purpose built laboratories for uh, for these two subjects. So under the same project, uh, we were going to construct these laboratories. So as a college, we are quite very much happy uh, for this construction. One of the activities within the project is the construction of uh, an ODL center. But this center is coming uh, as, uh, as an infrastructural uh, support to the college uh, because when the structure is completed, it will save as a, a office space uh, for ODL activities, but there will also be some uh, space for uh, uh, other activities. The Malawi 2063 goals may be big, the plans may be great, and the dreams may be immense. But the transition of Malawi into a middle-income economy begins now with a single step. The Ministry of Education has taken that indispensable first step to improve infrastructure in higher education institutions. Fruits of the massive expansion drive that we are doing can be seen from this year's record 
uh, of 8,552 students that have been selected to our uh, six public universities, representing a 14% increase from last year's 7,473 uh, that we were able to select. Once we are done with the current projects, more students should be able to access our universities uh, in Malawi, um, including students with diverse needs. Our target is to double the intake uh, in the next few years and that uh, in the long run, all candidates qualifying for higher education must be admitted. This quantum step is indeed a step in the right direction in filling the glaring gaps in the higher education sector to enable the country to realize Malawi 2063 agenda.